I have made many books about well-behaved people. Now, for a change, I'm going to make a story about two disagreeable people called Tommy Brock and Mr. Todd. Old Mr. Bouncer was stricken in years. He lived with his son Benjamin Bunny and his daughter-in-law Flopsy, who had a young family. Now take care of the children, Uncle Bouncer. We're going out visiting for a while. Mm, what? Oh, uh, <coughs> yes, yes. Of course, there, Flopsy, dear. There, mm. my dears. Perfectly all right, my dear. We won't be long. No, off you go and, uh, and enjoy yourselves, eh? Mm -hmm. Do you think they'll be all right with Father Flopsy, dear? Oh, yes. Uncle Bounce is very capable. Remember how he saved you and Peter from Mr. McGregor's garden when you were very young? I do. I do. Frogs or tadpoles to nibble at. Oh, I shall starve at this rate. Morning, Squire. Is that you, Brock? Ah, how are you keeping, Mr. Bouncer? Mm, uh, looking after the young'uns for me son, Benjamin. No problem. <laughs> no worries. Mm, yes. The sweet little things, aren't they? <laughs> No, oh, bear me company for a while. <laughs> What's the news from downhill, eh? Tommy, me dear fellow. Oh, oh, not so good, I'm sorry to say. A great scarcity of pheasant eggs these days. And very few frogs about. I have not had a good square meal in a fortnight. <laughs> I should have to turn vegetarian and eat me own tail. No. <laughs> 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 <Wait a minute. laughs> Vegetarian. <laughs> eat, eat me on tail. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yes. Uh, a great scarcity of nice tidbits, I'm afraid. I think it's down to the presence of old Todd. The fox. <coughs> oh, oh, my dear chap, uh, won't you step inside for a, a slice of seed cake and a, a glass of homemade cowslip wine to uh, fortify the uh, the constitution? Mm. Don't mind if I do, Squire. Todd, eh? Mm. Don't like the sound of that. Yes, uh, yes. Always a great scarcity of food when old Mr. Todd is on the trail. Uh, have a cabbage leaf cigar, Tommy. Go on. Well, I say, that's, uh, that's uncommon decent of you. Don't mind if I do. <clears throat> oh, that's grand. Oh. Mm. <sighs> oh. <coughs> Haven't seen old Sir Isaac in these parts lately, you know? Or, um... Or the alderman Ptolemy for a while, either. No, no, I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I don't get many visitors, me. Oh, not like it used to be. I'm a resident all the time. Yes. You have a nice little sleep. Mr. Pouncer. I'll take care of those nice little rabbits for you. Oh, no, what's that? Where are the children? 
Father, where are the babies? Oh! Oh! Oh, I can smell Badger, Benjamin! Has anyone been here? It's old Tommy Brook! He's taken our babies! Now don't worry, Flopsy. I'll catch that old rogue. Now, which way? Oh, how could you let me down? I trust in you. Ah, this way. You said you'd look after me. I was relying on you. Rabbit! Whatever is the matter, Cousin Benjamin? He's back my family. Tommy Brock in a sack. Have you seen him? Tommy Brock? Yes! Perhaps if you tell me from the beginning. Flopsy and I went out visiting neighbours. Uh, father was watching over the young ones, and old Tommy Brock must have arrived. Well, you can guess the rest. Cousin Benjamin, compose yourself. Because Mr. Todd is at home at the stick house, Tommy Brock has gone to Mr. Todd's other house, at the top of Bull Banks. Ah, uh, well, it, mm, nice places. Come quickly, Peter. Suit me fine. Oh. Is that the time? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Cottontail, uh, uh, have you seen Tommy Brock pass this way? Yes, he rested here for a while and was laughing. Squirrel Nutkin, uh, have you seen Tommy Brock? <sighs> come on, Benjamin, come on. Come on! I'm going as fast as I can. Wait for me, Peter. Peter, wait! We're close behind him by the scent. There were preparations upon the kitchen table which made Benjamin shudder. Preparations for one person's supper. Quick, let's look around the other side. What a dreadful place. We must 
stay rational and plan carefully or all will be lost. It will have to be a tunnel. It's the only way, a tunnel right under the house and into the kitchen. Then let's get on with it. Come on! Benjamin, it's sunrise. I think we've dug clear under the kitchen floor, so we should be able to tunnel upwards and free the babies. Shh! Who is it? It's Todd! In my house, in my bed. I'll fix that badger. Pleasant surprise. Mr. Todd, naturally being a thin-legged person, was quite unable to lift the heavy weight to the level of the hook and rope. After considerable thought, he emptied the water into a wash basin and jug.
The empty pail was not too heavy for him. He slung it up, wobbling over the head of Tommy Brock. As he could not lift the whole pailful of water at once, he ladled quarts of water into the pail by degrees. The pail got fuller and fuller and swung like a pendulum. What's he doing? At last, Mr. Todd's preparations were complete. The pail was full of water. The rope was tightly strained over the top of the bed and across the windowsill to the tree outside. What's going on? Yes, a very rude awakening indeed. It's too tight. I'll have to gnaw through it. <laughs> oh, this has turned out even better than I expected. <laughs> oh, I will bury that nasty person in a hole. I will bring my bedding out and dry it in the sun. I will have a father disinfecting with soft soap and monkey soap and all sorts of soap and sprinkle Persian powder to remove oh, the smell. Good morning, my foxy whiskered friend. Just in time for breakfast, I don't think. Ah! <laughs> All's well that ends well. That's what our mother always used to say. <laughs> I was a bit worried myself, actually. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Peter. Oh, I think Old Mr. Bouncer was forgiven. And they all had dinner. <laughs>